So the dough, the cheese, and then the sauce. Yeah. Salsa is simply chef. Yes. A simple tomato sauce, Sicilian style. Ah. So you see that the fat? That fat risen to the top. Yeah. Wow. There you go. <laughs> that butter is molten. It is. Oh, that looks amazing. Yeah. Mm. I think this first bite was all about the prank. Yeah. I think it's all about the prank. The moment you puncture it with your teeth, out gushes those juices of the smokiness. Juices and the smoky fervor of that home smoked chicken prank. Hi folks, for those of you familiar with Food Lovers TV, you know I taste plenty of regional Indian food on the show mostly. Be it meals from Karnataka, Tamil style meals, Kerala style meals, Bale Ale Uta, military meals, Mudde Uta, Biryanis, Palaus, Tiffin, Tindi, Idli, Vade, Dose, Karabat, Kesri Bath, Pongal, etc. etc. But today I felt like eating something different. Today I'm craving a pizza. And so I've set out to taste a pizza, but not one of the typical chains that you find in your neighborhood. I've set out to taste a pizza that's made by this individual in this pizzeria that he runs. And this place is about 25 kilometers away. That's right. So we've set out on a Saturday morning fighting Bengaluru's traffic to taste this pizza. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, all well? Oh, fist bump? Okay. <laughs> Hi. This is PC. Good okay. Job. Hi. Are you also part of? No, no, no. Very, very good friend of mine. Ah, okay. Yeah. So how do you pick this place to operate? Building's ours. Mom and dad bought this when I was doing my masters in it. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah. You're doing your masters in? I was doing my masters in Southern Italian cuisine. Southern Italian cuisine. Where in Italy? Down south in uh, this place called Calabria. Calabria. Should we proceed? Yeah, yeah, please. After, After you. After you. Okay. <laughs> This, this is the centralized kitchen. Okay. And the office. That's your office, okay? Yeah, so a lot of the magic happens over here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when people come here, they you make the pizza and they take them. So if they want to eat here? Uh, some of them eat over here. Okay. So we see them over there. Okay. If not, then uh, the upstairs uh, dining. Oh, you have a dining upstairs. Yeah. Can we take a look? Yeah, please. Wait. So this is Sidi's cafe. It was Spitfire before. Okay. And uh, now it's Sidi's. <laughs> so when you had Spitfire, the truck. Uh, when I was on the truck, it was just me. It was just you. Yeah. Cooking, serving, everything. Yeah. Driving, everything. <laughs> so that's Sadat Saukar. Hi. Sidi's pizza, of course. So I started Spitfire sometime 2010. Okay. I started that out of my car. So I would do door-to-door -door barbecues, basically. <laughs> so you would go to somebody's house, pull up, open your barbecue. Set it up at the balcony or the terrace and do like a nine course meal, that sort of a thing. So then I did my masters. Okay. Came back 2014 and I said, let's revive Spitfire. Okay. But in its new avatar, the truck. As a truck. As a truck. And where's the truck now? Trucks at home. Trucks at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trucks at home because So after this situation. happened, you, you had to shut down operations of the truck. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. pretty much. A lot of ups and downs. And then when did this cafe happen? This was in 2018 okay. when I started Spitfire Barbecue Company. Yeah, known the world over for our pork ribs and, and okay. the good So meats. that's what you would serve here? Yeah. So we've got our smokers upstairs. Okay. This one certainly looks like it's been well used. All the fat. All the rendered fats, yeah. All the rendered fat dripping. Do you fabricate these or do you? Yeah, I make these in the basement. You make these in the basement? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are fashioned out of drums? Barrels, yeah, Barrels. Drums, drums. So what would you would you typically use to smoke? I think I'm the only one in India using jackfruit. Jackfruit wood? Yeah, gives ah. a little sweeter smoke. 
Really? Okay. Yeah, it's, and it's not a sappy wood. It's not a sappy wood it's and it's quite wood. easy to come by as well. Yeah, it's much cheaper than mango. <laughs> a nice hot burning wood. Then COVID hit. COVID hit, okay. And I shut this down and uh, spent a good two months sitting at home doing nothing. And I said, I think it's time for me to, you know, get back on my feet. Okay. And get to, get to work. And uh, the only two things that actually increased in terms of sales during the lockdown was biryani and pizza. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So you said, let's do pizza. I said, yeah, I said, let's do pizza because everyone's doing biryani, but nobody's doing a good pizza. So that's how city's pizza happened. Yes. It's a one-man operation. And uh, the thing is, I'm blessed because everyone's been so understanding. It's, it's like a one-man show kind of thing. So they don't mind, you know, coming downstairs and telling me what they want or or stuff like that. So it's like a little family thing. Everyone who walks in the door over here becomes a friend of mine. So. Uh. <laughs> yeah. This is what started Spitfire. So, yeah. so would this go in the truck? This was actually in the truck. Oh, ah, okay. So you got it down so, yeah, I just, this uh, cafe. Yeah. You also have a tandoori? I wanted to do good Afghani chic. Okay. To be honest with you. And okay. uh, you know your Turkish kebabs, the, ah. the big ones. And we tried it out, people loved it. Uh. But then like I said, COVID. You know. Can't can't keep blaming COVID for it, but yeah, I've only got two hands. You only have two hands. Yeah. So you decided to do what you can manage. What I love doing the most. This is a Sicilian thick crust. It's like a like a focaccia. Yeah. How long have you kept this? It's been sitting for about three hours. Alright. Flour, salt. salt, sugar, sugar, yeast. Yeast. Oil. Okay. Olive oil. Olive oil. Extra okay. virgin. Okay. Water. All right. And a uh, whole lot of love. Whole lot of love. <laughs> so your style of pizzas are more Sicilian. So Let me say I've got my second set of roots <laughs> in the south of Italy. Yeah. If you ask me, Sicily is full of flavor, full of love. Okay. And full of passion when it comes to making food. Nobody goes hungry in Sicily. In the south of Italy rather. Anything below Rome. I think it's just the people over there. It's like South India, you know, warm and welcoming. So I'm going to do one of our classics, which is uh, Sicilian pepperoni, pepperoni with olives. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. All and right. the trick over here is sauce goes on after the cheese. On my thin crust, I do sauce first, then cheese on top. But on these, I do cheese first and then sauce on top. The so the, yeah, so the, the crust doesn't become soggy. Ah. Yeah. Massage it a little bit. So you want springy. You want to get your hand very oh. gentle. And what does this do? It just kind of this. Uh, you're basically looking at leveling it out a bit. But this feels good. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I could I could keep going at this all day. I very mean, very soothing. Absolutely. And yeah. All that oil coming out. So there's a fair bit of oil in this, sir. Huh? Uh, it is, but uh, none of it really goes into the dough. Okay. It's just to give it that crispy crust. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's where the oil helps. And is it a ratio of the flour to the rest of the ingredients? There is no ratio. The climate plays a very, very important role in the making of the dough. Okay. So there will be days when I have to add a little less water. And there will be days when I have to add twice the amount of water. So, so 300 degrees. 300 on top. Okay. 320-ish below. It'll sh it should touch about 330. And what's the ideal temperature for a pizza to be? If you ask me, ideal would be five, six hundred degrees. That's not possible in these. Unfortunately, not. Okay. So basically, when you place a pizza or a focaccia in there, you want that to be. I want. I want a crispy crust. Okay. I want a soft inside, not right. uh, chewy, but mm, literally a melt in your mouth kind of uh, feel. All right. So it's got to be the right temperature. So yeah. The moment you place it in. It starts forming that crust at exactly, the bottom, and exactly. it also doesn't become soggy. Yeah, with the it toppings. doesn't become I mean, soggy. The toppings will seep through that. Correct. So we're going to start off with cheese first. Okay. And we're using mozzarella. It's not fresh mozzarella. It's diced and frozen. Not too salty. It's not too. Isn't salty at all. Not too overpowering, mm. because uh, again, if you ask me, the cheese is it's like a little bit of a flavor and answer. It's not supposed to overpower. Yeah. The main carrier of a pizza is your dough. Is the dough? Is your dough? Oh, that's your sauce. Yes. So this is our sauce. So this is again is a, quite literally the secret sauce, is it? Pretty much. I started off my career making sauces. So. Ah, okay. Yeah. And what would you call this sauce? We we call it a salsa semplice, which is a simple sauce. A simple sauce. Simple sauce. In Italian. In Italian. 
There's a bit of heat that I get as well. There you go. That's chili. Chili. That's chili. There is a bit of uh, herbs in it. Mm. I'm super generous when it comes to cheese. All right. So the objective is that you don't see any of the dough. Uh, you see a little bit of the dough. You see a little bit of the yeah, dough. Yeah, because the air needs to escape uh, okay. somehow or the other, right? Now we go for the sauce. I can see some chili seeds in there. Is that yes. What chili do you use? Guntur. No paprika. It's no color, no paprika, no nothing. So the dough, the cheese, and then the sauce. Yeah. Salsa simply shape. Yes. A simple tomato sauce, Sicilian style. Again, red onions. Red onions. No, no fancy white onions. No shallots. No nothing. Mm. None of that stuff. So what goes now? Oh, of course, the pepperoni. Pepperoni. So we used to make this in house. Okay. Uh, but now I source it directly from my butcher. Okay. Again, our recipe. No nitrates. And no pink salt, no curing salt because it's unhealthy. It's meat, salt, salt of course, sugars, okay, uh, Some spices, herbs. onions, pepper. Oh. Different different names for these pizzas all over the world. Okay. So if you go down to the states, this is called the grandma slice. The grandma slice. If you go to the heavy, you know, Sicilian neighborhoods of okay. the states, it's the focaccia. Though. Some pepperoni before it's <laughs> baked. On top of that pizza. So this is all smoked. So it's mm. technically ready to eat. I love the smoky aromas of the meat. Yeah, and it's a, it's a sweet smoke. So it's a sweet smoke. So you're tasting the meat. There's also a bit of the fat. There's also a bit of the fat that I think seals all the flavors in there. Exactly. So it as this that. gets baked, so that fat's going to play a yeah. Important so role. you'll you'll see these forming a nice little cup uh, of sorts. It's like a Cappuccino of pork fat. So the flecks of fat that you see in the pepperoni slices have a very important role to play. It's, it's all about flavor. You know, I like how Sid is making sure every square inch of this pizza, grandma slice as some people would call it, is getting coated with that pepperoni. He ran out of it, but he went back and got some <laughs> more. And there you go. So hot oven, have to be careful. Gluten nets. Gluten nets. Nets. So that's a gluten net. Okay. You see those little things coming yeah. off? That's all gluten. So this dough has been sitting for five hours. Four, four and a half, five four hours. Five hours. Yeah. So what are you going to be making now? Right. So I'm going to do a uh, margarita. Okay. Fantastic. And I'm going to do a little take on Spitfire, which is a smoked chicken and cheese. Let's go for it. So out here, it's all your hands. It's basically. Yeah. These so that's hands. the measure. That's the measure. That's the measure. That's so the when measure. you cup that. Ball of dough, you know. I know exactly how much it is, yeah. Uh, I mean, I developed this dough because I wanted it to be a quick dough. I could just say... I love the sweet aroma that that dough is exuding smells, even, as he is, even as he's kneading it in his hands. I'm going to okay. do a simple garlic bread. A simple yeah. garlic bread. So okay. you can taste the dough. That's for the garlic bread. That's for the garlic bread. So this is about 120 grams. So that's 200 grams. This is 120 grams. 120. Maida. Maida. No improvers, no gluten, no nothing. No, nothing. <laughs> because if I leave it here for even two minutes, you'll see it'll, it'll puff up. Alright. So like I said, it's a quick dough. Watch and see. Oh. It springs back. That springs back right away. I'm going to be eating this pizza, so I think I can take liberties playing, yeah. <laughs> playing with it. It's a very relaxing feeling, right? Oh, it is. Working with dough. So somebody who makes a pizza, what do they call him? Pizzaioli. Pizzaiolos. I think I might have found another profession that I might... You can come spend some time like, every Sunday uh, over here. <laughs> and get paid in pizzas. Yeah, I'll teach you how to make pizza. Really? Yeah. I might take you up on that. For sure. Someday. And we're going to do the garlic bread first. Okay. So the garlic bread I, I like doing with hand, by, okay. by hand. So there's yeah. no rolling pin? No rolling pin. So this is formed a nice little seven inch. Okay. Now what we do is we have to dock. It doesn't puff up. It doesn't the puff up. That's and right. All the, all the good butter will just fall off on the that's side. That's right. So all My of that on. That's what at least 50 grams of butter in that. 35, 40, 35, 40 grams. 35, 40 grams. And this is what pepper in that. What is that? Oregano. Oregano. Okay. Garlic. Garlic. Okay. So there's there's a bit of science behind this. Okay. Now since we've docked the dough, okay. right? this butter is going to seep in to those little 
crevices okay and form a, a beautifully fluffy garlic bread my mouth's watering sorry <laughs> so is mine so i can actually visualize that hot butter finding its way through those crevices exactly and cooking that dough yeah along the minuscule walls of those crevices yeah exactly right so and the whole idea is to not dock it too much because then you're going to have a firm dough Ah, uh, you're probably be tasting a a biscuit of sorts. A biscuit, yeah, a biscuit yeah. of sorts. It's more of a bread. It's garlic bread, right? So stay stay true to the meaning of it. I'll give you an apron. No, I'd rather let you make okay. it. Okay. <laughs> But I might just take you up on that offer for without, the camera. Without. And make sure we don't edit this. Siddhi has promised me. Make a pizza all out of you. He's going to make a pizza all out of me someday. And so I'm, I'm going to teach you. To and I'm going to teach you how to smoke meats as well. Will you also teach me how to make that dough? Thought it out. Yes. Yeah. And I won't make a video of it just to guide us. <laughs> so now we're going to do the uh, margarita. The margarita. Okay. And so this will come into what? How many inches? Twelve inch. Twelve inch. Okay. Yeah. I do. So I it's do. It's almost twice inch. of that garlic. Yes. So what I like doing is I like bringing it to this spot. Okay. And uh, then getting one of my meshes. Okay. All right. And then what I do is I just go two more rounds. Okay. So it stretches out a bit. Okay. And what I have is a perfect 12 inch. Oh, fantastic. Yep. And that bit extra will just form that ring. That shrinks. Oh, that shrinks. That, so that shrinks into of... a 12 inch. Yeah. So oh, right, right now it's about 13 and a half ish. All right. So as it heats, it will shrink. Yeah. And I bring it back. Right, so we have these two bases ready. Okay. You've been to many dosa places. Mm. Same principle. Start off from the center, and the whole idea is not go all the way to the edge, because you want that little of a. You don't want the sauce to weigh down the rim. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So you want a bit of that puffed edge. This this forms a barrier for any of the topping sliding off. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You know, you may not think of all these things when you are savoring a pizza, but there's so much. This it's science, an art. This art. It's it's a combination of art and science. Uh, right? Art and science, mathematics. Mathematics. <laughs> you know the sauce is revealing what's within it. In it. Yeah. So you can see the chilies for sure. I the think we're the only flakes. ones doing a spiced sauce. Okay. You want to try hand making? Yeah. Why not? Dosa sauce. <laughs> dosa sauce. I've never tried my hand at making a dosa, but not bad. I'm definitely returning to. Earn my pizza making apron. Are we good? Basta, perfect. Yeah. So that's the master, and that's a wanna be pizza yolo. Soon to be. Soon to be pizza. Soon to be pizza yolo. Ah. So you see that fat? That fat risen to the top. Yeah. Is this ready? Yeah, ready. It just needs to sit out and rest for a little bit. Okay. Cool. So again, no holds barred on on the cheese. All right. Because I do about, I think two and a half, two and a quarter handfuls of cheese for you. Of cheese pizza. for each pizza. So that's how many grams roughly? About two hundred ish. Two hundred grams. Yeah. What are these pizzas priced at? Surprisingly reasonable. Okay. Yeah. So our margarita is at three hundred fifty bucks for a large. For a twelve inch. Yeah. And uh, the pepperoni six fifty. And the smoked chicken. Smoked chicken is about four twenty. Right. So now one of them is going to be a margarita. So nothing on it. How long does that take? Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Okay. Eight minutes. Now we have to do a smoked chicken. Two of our Spitfire Franks, pure meat. This is made by you. In house, we use skinless casings. Okay. Again, no nitrates, no additives, no nothing. Okay. Just it's pure old school methods of curing meat mm -hmm. and smoking it. So this one goes in the oven. So there you go. I can't wait to taste the pizzas. The Sicilian, Sicilian is already out. We're just waiting for it to rest a bit. 
We've got two more pizzas in the oven. We've got a margarita. We have the smoked chicken. Smoked chicken and cheese. And smoked onion. Smoked chicken and cheese. And then, of course, we have the garlic bread. This bad boy comes and sits down over here. So, I think the cheese and the tomato sauce have become one. Yeah. It's a joyful union of yeah, the yeah. mozzarella and the salsa simplice. Salsa simplice. And that's what's born out of that. The sign of a good pizza. Okay. Right. Is I should be able to lift it up. Ah, okay. Without the thing drooping off the sides. So then you know your crust is forms a bit of a char and you're left with this beautiful texture. Wow. There you go. <laughs> that butter is molten. It is. I have a very limited menu. Okay. Right? I've got three types of garlic bread. Okay. I've got uh, three veg pizzas and I've got three non-veg pizzas. And what are the veg pizzas? So the veg pizzas are mushroom and cheese. Mushroom and cheese. Alfungi. Alfungi. Classic combination. Pretty much. Alright. And uh, the other one I have is again acclimatized to the Indian palate, which okay. is a peri peri paneer. Peri peri paneer, okay. A little bit of a spicy key. Yeah. It's yeah. a marinade that we make in-house. Okay. Oh, that looks amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's a loaded pizza. But what I love is that it's not sagging a wee bit. Yeah. For this, you need to have the, the temperature of the oven should be perfect, right? Pretty much. And probably the strength of the, the pizza dough. So this is a little sharp basil that we grow in the farm. Okay. You can have a taste. It's all washed, so. Mm. It's, a, it's a spicy basil. Yeah. It's got a spicy peppery thing. Yeah. Time to escort the pizzas to the cafe upstairs. I don't think I've ever tasted pizza that I've watched that pizza being made from scratch. Oh. Watch the making of that pizza, of course, by our acclaimed what do you call yourself i call myself a guy who can cook a guy who can <laughs> cook and cook like that i'm gonna cut the garlic bread dig in dig in dig in go for it yeah this is actually light and fluffy it is yeah. it's not a it's not a dense dough you can actually see the butter has found its way up to a certain point and then this base has this wonderful char. Mmm. Yeah. That bread is as soft as a pillow. It is. Mm -hmm. If you had a pillow like this, you'd have a midnight snack right under your head. <laughs> oh my goodness. Mmm. And then that pungent hit of the garlic. Not overpowering, well balanced. I think that garlic is balanced with the salt. With the salt, exactly. And I love the crunch. That crunch of that garlic bread. Whatever garlic bread you may have tasted until now, put that aside. This one says garlic bread in a whole new language. Yeah. <laughs> uh, perhaps the language of Sicily. The, the language of love. The language of love. Yeah, and it's not French. <laughs> mm, delicious. I want to go for one of those pieces on the side now. This bread has strength. It does. So I think all that gluten. Yeah. That and it's not a dense bread. It is not. So the bread has weight, but in a very light sort of a way. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's exactly the sort of bread that I'm tasting. And what I like is the fact that you've got an even crust on the top and you've got a crust at the bottom too. And even as you bite on the bread, you've got that whisper of a crust. Yeah, yeah, you do. Very slight. Mm. Subtle. Truth be told, I don't need anything with this, but since you have this yeah. cheddar cheese sauce here. I think that cheddar cheese, that dip, brings everything together. Yeah, it does. It embraces it does. the airy puffiness of that bread, that butter laid in chew, the pungency of the garlic and the salt. It embraces it all within its lush folds. It would be an honor. So. Really? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, there you go. Just go all the way through. And there you go. A slice of the Sicilian style margarita. margarita. Yeah. That pizza crust is holding itself firm. But this is the edge. The edge that's burdened with the tomato sauce, with the salsa simplice and that cheese. And a teeny weeny bit of basil <laughs> that's drooping down. You know, when I tasted the tomato sauce just by itself, it was I think the sauce was sharper. Sharper, high on acidity. That's right. But I think now, partnered with that cheese and with that... The crust. The crust. The flavors are more rounded. Mm. And I also bit into a bit of the basil. When I tasted the basil raw, the basil came across rather sharply. Sharp. Rather sharp on yeah. the palate, but now the basil, like you said, has a slight sweet edge. Sweet edge, yeah. It's a it's a tinge of sweetness towards the end. Is this is this a degree of char that you would want on the bottom? I go a lot more sometimes. Okay. But since it's your first time, I'm gonna I'm gonna wean you into. You're gonna the, ease me into the pizza. Yeah, I'm gonna. He's I'm gonna, gonna wean me into eating a pizza. <laughs> I don't think anybody's ever told me. No, that. because not a lot of people actually uh, appreciate the char on the bottom. Yeah. yeah. It's it's just a matter of understanding and time. And now, as you work your way to the back of the pizza, you're also tasting a slight toasty edge. Yes. Crusty cheese. The crusty yeah. cheese, which is what you're tasting. So I think even a pizza, when you taste a pizza, I think you'll find different flavor profiles. At the center, I think the ratio of the bread, of the crust, is much lower. Is much lower to the topping. It is. Right? So as you progress towards the outward rim of the pizza, you're tasting more of the crust. Yeah. And perhaps also more of the cheese that has of formed the crust. Thing, yes. And the sauce is just somewhere in between those two. Mm. And then of course you come to the rim of the pizza. Mm. What I like is that the pizza, even as I'm chewing on it, has a bit of strength. It does. There's a bit of elasticity to it. It, it, does. it doesn't it doesn't clump together like stodgy bread. True. Nor does it crackle like papad. What you also find are these air pockets within that crust. So if you look closely, you'll be able to see the gluten structures. Ah. Mm. This is a pizza that I've been eyeing as it was baking in the oven. With the smoked chicken, the onion, and of course the cheese and the sauce. Mm. I think this first bite was all about the prank. Yeah. I think it's all about the frank. The moment you puncture it with your teeth, out gushes those juices of the smokiness. juices and the smoky fervor of that home smoked chicken frank. And then of course you have the crunch, the crunch of the onion. Mm. And once you get past being mesmerized by that smoky chicken frank, you can then taste the crunch, the slightly sweet crunch of the onions. The onions as they're baked in the oven, you can also taste some of the, you like can caramel. see some of the sugars yeah. of the onions. I think out here, the cheese and the tomato sauce is very happy, playing a distant supporting role. True. I love this. So these are the same franks that, that have been on our hot dogs from day one. Mm. Yeah. Where was I? Uh. We were dishing out those franks. <laughs> if you're a chicken lover and you taste this, you'll be very unhappy when you go back to tasting any other chicken again. I think the, the smoked fervor, the smokiness, but. there's a certain woody note to it. True. Mm. I don't know if you can get that sweetness off the smoke. Mm. That's the jackfruit. So. That's delicious. As I work my way towards the edge of that pizza, I can now feel its biscuity bite at the rim. Mm. I know that's waiting for us, but I want to go back go for, for another stab at this. Mm. Look at the base of this pizza. It's a little more brown. This is a little more toasty. Toasty, yeah. as opposed to that one. Happiness doesn't need much. Some flour, some salt, some water, some oil, some tomatoes, 
a few herbs here and there. Yeah. Some onions and some smoked chicken franks. And one city. Hmm? <laughs> and one city. City, yeah. <laughs> I almost forgot the main. <laughs> mm. I think the crust you appreciate most when there's not a single slice of the pizza left. True. Because right now, even as I'm chewing on this crust, I know there's more pizza I can go to. There's more smoked chicken that I can go to, and there's of course the pepperoni Sicilian. But when you have none of this, and all that you have is a bit of the crust, I think that's when you appreciate it most. True. So this is a traditional Sicilian. It's mostly the focaccia, the bread. The focaccia. And then of course topped with the... Not, not an over-the-top airy focaccia, but you will feel the lightness of this when you eat it. So. Alright, and this one you have the cheese that's gone first. First. And then sauce. And then the sauce, yeah. the onions and then of course the pepperoni. Pepperoni. Mm. So the texture of this bread is very different. It is, but it's the same dough. The same dough. Yeah. Feels a lot more bready. But it's not a dense, dense bread, you know. It's not. I think that's where the, the strength of the toppings. True. The onion, the cheese comes into play. I haven't tasted the, the pepperoni, pepperoni yet. itself, yeah. The deep savoury character of the meat. Yeah. Not too salty. No, it's not salty at all. Yeah. Not too salty. So you actually taste the taste the, the pork itself, which is the pork itself and the fat yeah. of the pork that's released as the focaccia as the Sicilian is being baked. But out here, I think because of the fact that the bread is more porous, actually I thought I would taste more of the sauce on the thin crust. No, the but hero I'm the hero over here for the Sicilian deep dish is the bread. But I'm tasting a lot more sauce. In addition to the bread, ah, I'm tasting okay. the strength of the sauce. True, 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 true. To be a lot more in this. And I think I'm going to go for another slice of the Sicilian. Just to get to know it a little better. So it's good for breakfast, lunch and dinner. You know, this is the sort of pizza that you can keep in the refrigerator. Yeah. Get up in the middle of the night, hungry. 3 a.m. Reach, in, reach in for a slice of the pizza, don't even heat it. Don't even heat it. You can also taste the oil. So like I said, right, these have to cup up and that oil seeps in. Uh, the oil, the olive oil is also what you taste as an additional element in this pizza, in the Sicilian. Mm. I'm not done with my pizzas. I think I will probably go for another slice of that smoked chicken. But I'm going to let you go. I think it's been a fascinating afternoon watching the pizzas come alive, being made from scratch by city. You know, it's fascinating to learn. Although you've been making the pizza for a while, you've actually focused only on the pizza for the last eight or nine months. And I think that reflects in the flavors that I've tasted. I think great food, food that's sublime, doesn't need to be complex. All that it needs is a few ingredients and understanding of what you're doing. And as Sid said, you need tons of love. Tons of love. And I think that's what the loaded pizzas at City's Pizza are all about. So if you're in this part of town, actually make the trek to this part of town to get a slice of some of City's Pizzas. You can of course also order them online, but I think nothing like coming here and watching those pizzas being baked from scratch. I hope you enjoyed this one. Until the next time, take care, stay safe. Bye-bye. If you'd like to support the work that we do at Food Lovers TV, do consider joining our membership community on YouTube by hitting the join button below or on the home page. You could pledge a nominal sum and receive special privileges like behind the scenes footage, shoot updates, access to live Q&As and a lot more. You could support us on our Patreon page as well. For more info, check out the links in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share and leave a comment below. Happy eating!